Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I want to apologize for the last attempted broadcast. Uh, first, I thought it was thinking it was a network issue. It's the processor on my primary computer. I normally shoot from my desk uh, desktop. And uh, for whatever reason, it's processing slow and it turned me off. Uh, so here I am. I'm shooting actually from my phone right now. Uh, I'm not sure how much uh, battery of life. I think I have enough to get through this broadcast because I don't have my charger now that I think about it. Oh, uh, man. Should have thought it through, but I want to go ahead and get this done. I've got so much I've got to get done today. Today, And if everything works out the way that I would like it to work out, I'll be back before you at least twice more. Uh, so I want to talk to you today. Now, uh, although I don't have the links on this, it's on the previous attempted broadcast that is still posted. Once I finish broadcasting, I'm going to move all of that information over here so you can get it. But if you want to move on it while you hear me talking and mentioning it, mentioning it you can just go back to uh, my um, timeline and the post before uh, this live, which was an attempted live broadcast, will have the information in the description box. But for uh, first, let's talk about Cyber Mon Monday at the Visionetics Institute. Uh, this is my 20th book, Critical Mass, The Phenomenon of Next Level Living. Uh, it's a peek inside of the mind of a mind freak, a person that understands the importance of controlling your thoughts and how that's done and the, and, and, and the different techniques you use into developing a different level of thinking. And we're going to talk about some of that as we move forward. But for anybody who actually purchases this through tomorrow, which is Cyber Monday, through uh through tomorrow you will also receive um a free disc assessment so we're going to assess your strengths and how you can use those in what you're attempting to do in your life and that's something you can immediately take advantage of uh so keep that in mind also all of my uh programs and courses from coaching to paradigm shifts uh finance 101 all of that stuff is now uh, 25% off and my flagship program, which is the platinum package, which is generally 52 weeks, one year of engagement and training and, 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 and goal setting and building and uh, remapping and re-imaging and all of the things that come as a part of that is now 50% off and an additional 26 weeks added to it. Yes, a year and a half of one-on-one -on -one with yours truly going after the things you want in life. And I can't tell you how I'm excited, excited I am. I've, I've told you this over the past week or so. I've partnered with Body by God, and my goal is uh, at by the end of 2019 to have touched one million lives uh, in a positive way. And so I'm, that's what I'm driving for. That's what I'm striving for. Uh, and I'm on, we, we started early and I believe in that. I don't believe in saying, okay, I'm going to do this on this date. I believe once it comes into your head, you move on it. Now it may be okay for the year of 2019, but I'm moving on it now. I want momentum going into 2019. That's something so important. Build momentum moving into something. Um, but that's that. I want, what I want to talk to you about, uh, today is, uh, how we're, how we're programmed, how we're set up, um, and how we change our approach. Uh, maybe you've heard of James Allen and you've, maybe you've read his book, um, As a Man Thinketh. Maybe you've read in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, As a Man Thinketh in His Heart, So Is He. Uh, you are what you think. They're uh, constantly over and over again, you're, you're being told that uh, your thoughts have physicality and they do. Your thoughts literally have physicality. Your thoughts are literally creating the reality that you're experiencing. And whether you're talking uh, a person who has a, a faith that's anchored in the Bible, it's biblical. You're talking about a person that's uh, faith is anchored in histor history. It's, it, it's historical. If you have a, a person who's, whose faith is anchored in, 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 in uh, physics, it's phys it, it has physicality. It, it can be proven. It can be studied. It is real. Uh, we are seeing it more and more as we advance in our ability to study the brain, the, uh, the, brain, the mind, and how it operates, uh, the, 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 the level of energy and how it moves. All of these things have a purpose in life, and they serve us when we know how to access them and use them. You've probably heard the term 
programming or you are programmed or whatever you, you, you know, your program is, whatever, you've heard it before. A lot of times it's used with a negative connotation of that you're brainwashed, you're indoctrinated or whatever. But the truth of the matter is all of us are running on a program. All of us are running on a program that we, most of us received in totality by the age of seven. Up until the age of seven, a kid is in a, uh, children are in a state known as theta. It's a highly suggestive state. It's where they're able to absorb it. It, it enhances their teachability. It's how they learn. Because by this date, about, by the age of seven, a kid pretty much knows all of the universal rules that allow them to operate in security. Things you say, things you don't say. Things you do, things you don't do. What happens when this happens? All of those things have been, uh, inculcated into their psyche and into their mind and into their subconscious at a level that it's automatic to them. You don't put your finger in a socket. You don't just walk up to a street and run across without looking both ways. Uh, some of it was told to them. Some of it they observed. Um, some of it, you know, uh, they experienced, but it was all a teaching lesson up until the age of seven and it locks in. Now, the thing is, uh, the vast majority of us live 90 something percent of our lives based on what we set in motion or uh, locked in by the age of seven. Now, some people, it, what they locked in was good. Some people, what they locked in wasn't so good. The beautiful thing about it is there's no such thing as locked in. We know now that there's this thing called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity says that while I have certain neurons that are connected, that are entangled, that are firing consistently off of the memories that I have interpreted and setting of my paradigm, I can change that at any moment. I can begin a process to introduce new ideas. I'm not stuck in a way of thinking. I'm not stuck in a particular type of personality. I'm not stuck in any type of reality I don't want to be in. I can literally start to engage new ideas that open up new possibilities and I can change my life through the way I think and through the way I see where I'm going through. Uh, call it faith, call it whatever you want to call it, but it is the idea of creating new beliefs that transcend any problems that you currently perceive as being an issue. Now, here's the thing with programming. Programming, again, is set up primarily in a state of theta. What, what happens after a kid, uh, a child uh, reaches the age of seven is they move from primarily being in a state of theta, which is being able to take suggestions and take them in and make them a part of their paradigm, as well as having a in a heightened sense of imagination and being able to bring things that they can imagine into the world of reality and create they move into more of a beta or alpha state which is more about operating from what you know and so now you're operating off of what you know instead of what you can learn and what you create but here's the thing theta still exists it exists primarily in the time between the time you start falling to see sleep and 30 minutes later so there's this window of 30 minutes in which you are falling asleep and you're in theta, which is a state of highly suggestibility. Have you ever noticed, and I talked about this in the previous one, I don't know if you guys were able to hear it, but have you ever noticed that the vast majority of infomercials are late at night? Uh, there's a reason for that. They understand theta. What They understand that a lot of people sit up and watch TV until they fall asleep. And they're not trying to catch you consciously before you fall asleep. They're trying to catch you in the state of theta where you're still sitting there or laying there and watching television and falling asleep when your eyes are actually closed and you're drifting out of consciousness. And see, when, when, you, when you're awake, you have this thing working for you. It's called consciousness and uh, an analytical mindset. You have a conscious mind, which is the perceiver of... Uh, are the gatherer of information. It's the awareness of what's happening and the, and the collector of information. And then you have an analytical mind, which is the, which is the, um, you have an analytical mind, uh, an analytical mind, which is what processes the information, determines whether it's true, determines whether it's something you're going to hold on to, gives it a sense of, gives it a sense of, priority it then sends it through what we know what we call the reticular activating system which is a bundle of nerves at the base of the brain that processes it and gives it priority and sends it to the subconscious well when you are falling asleep and you're in this state of theta right at the beginning of falling asleep and to roughly around 30 minutes 
the, some of the conscious mind is turned off and the analytical mind is turned off. Now information flows directly from the information source to the subconscious. There's no block, there's no filter, there's nothing but the subconscious being blocked. Now that can be good or bad. It depends on what information is being played or heard while this is happening. Have you ever gone to sleep and had this unbelievable crazy dream, good or bad, and you're trying, well, I don't know where that came from. It's more likely that it came from this time of theta where you are drifting off to sleep and you still have the TV on or you have your ear earplugs in and it's suggesting uh, whatever, whatever, and then it will you, you'll end up dreaming about it because it what's lead, it, it's what's leading into uh, delta. Now, delta is the state where you're totally out of consciousness and now what's taking over is the subconscious and it's feeding it, you in the way of, uh, of ideas and thoughts that become what we call dreams. Well, here's the thing. You get pharmaceutical uh, commercials, infomercials. Everybody's trying to convince you that they have a solution to a problem that you may not even have, but they're suggesting that you have it in the most suggestive state. You wake up and now you got a problem that doesn't even really exist, but you were, it was, you were told that it exists. And now you're looking for the solution and it just happens to be already planted in your subconscious that this company can provide the solution. It's a very powerful mechanism. Media is one of the greatest threats to human progress because very few people are feeding you information and data through mainstream media that will support your progression. It's about them getting you to spend money on what they have to sell you than it is about helping you achieve the things you want to achieve in life. You have to guard your gates because you are being programmed during this time. So how do you do it? You've got to understand that uh, a lot of people don't understand that uh, they're experiencing the same thing over and over again, not because they're stuck, but because they keep reliving it. They keep revisiting it. They keep rethinking it. How is that? That's because they're being anchored in their past by their emotions. In other words, your emotions serve as anchors. They're not just feelings, they're anchors. And it's, it's a feeling associated with a particular reality. Now, most people are anchored by emotions that are attached to negative realities uh, that happen in the past. Some have things that they're str struggling and worrying, with, worrying about now, but even those things that they're worrying about now were probably manifested by worrying about things that happened in the past, being anchored to them. Can't let go of hurt, can't let go of pain, can't let go of past mistakes, past failures. Uh, and so you're anchored in it and you keep thinking about it. Now, the thing is, I've said this over and over again, you've got to really understand and take it to heart, is that what you focus on, you feel. The thing that you give the most attention to is the thing that gets the most of your energy. The thing that gets the most of your energy is going to dominate your reality. It's that simple. So it's not about what's happening. It's not about what you want. It's about what you give attention to. It's about what you give focus to. But most of us are focused on the past. Now, here's the unbelievable thing. Really, when you start to create your future, you're really creating a memory of the future before it happens, or at least before it happens in the, the world. And what do I mean by that? Well, the, the same way that our mind and our thoughts control uh, of the past control our present, so does our, my, uh, our ideas and thoughts of the future. And what happens is when you can create a reality of what you expect in the future, and you can make this reality so vivid that you literally began to experience the emotions associated with that re reality, you've given your body a new experience because it's feeling the emotions. Here's what normally happens. You go through a situation, it's a bad situation. You identify with it and you stick with it. You keep thinking about it and it keeps controlling you. It's a negative feeling. It's a feeling of anxiety, a feeling of worry, a feeling of stress, a feeling of fear, a feeling of anger, all which are negative and have a negative impact on your physical health and your mental health. But you are focused on it because it was so impactful in your life that you can't release it. So now you're focused on it and you're sitting there and there's this emotion that goes with it that's not good but your body feels it. See, thoughts are the language of the mind and feelings or emotions are the language of the body. It literally, you feel something. You ever heard somebody say it just doesn't feel right? It's because they're moving into a reality that they haven't experienced on a regular basis and they, they, their body can't relate to it. And if you're a person that's constantly in a state of worry, stress, anxiety, then when you move into something that makes you feel good, it actually doesn't feel right. Well, what it actually is, is it doesn't feel familiar. What you're doing is visiting something that's so uh, alien to you that it's uncomfortable. Now, here's the thing. That's why people, it's not just the chemical addiction of being some, uh, being uh, addicted to something. Yes, 
Uh, chemical, the, the chemical dependency is a part of it, but addiction is more than chemical dependency because if it was just chemical dependency, you wouldn't have uh, sex addiction. You wouldn't have um, uh, gambling a, as a form of, a, of an addiction and so many other things that people become addicted. People become addicted to being victims. How? Because I am the victim. I'm always something I always have. You, you've seen this person. Everything can be going right and they will find something wrong. Why? Because their body is demanding it. Their, the feelings are so powerful of an influence in their life that their body is literally demanding that they feel the way they normally feel. And the body is actually becoming the mind. The body's force is so strong that it's sending messages to the brain that I don't like this feeling. Find me something that'll give me the feeling I'm used to. And the brain goes to work because you haven't or they haven't, whoever it is, hasn't come to a point where they know how to control what's happening and to bring their body into a situation. They haven't learned how to tell their body, you're not the mind. The body is literally sitting up and saying, I need to feel stressed. I need to feel worried. I need to feel upset. I need to be angry. And the brain will go out and find something to create that emotion and you relive it over and over again. And, 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 and until you train the mind to resist the body and create a new emotion and a new feeling that you can adapt to, you're going to consistently have the same problem of repeating the cycle of life in a negative way. But but here's the beautiful thing: the brain does the, uh, the 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 subconscious does not have the ability to distinguish between what is being imagined and what is absolutely real. I mean, actually, something you can touch and what you're imagining. So when you create this new idea of what's going to happen in the future, the brain sits up and says, "This is who I am." Why does the brain say, "This is who I am," and not, "This is what I'm going to become"? Because the brain also does not have the ability to determine between past, present, and future. The brain sees everything as now. So when that's why when you're thinking in the past, you're experiencing it now. Your memories of the past aren't something you're just sitting back chilling. It's creating an emotion that's creating a reality now. The brain doesn't see past, present, and future. It sees everything in the now. So when you're able to go off into your future, create this reality, create this idea of what you're going to accomplish down the line a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, five years from now, and it's something positive. It's something strong enough to create, strong enough and lucid and clear enough to create an emotion that's positive. You begin to live in that emotion. Now, at first, just living in the emotion is going to be uncomfortable because it's unfamiliar. It's not going to quote unquote feel right. So what most people will do is start to tell themselves why it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right because it's not realistic. It doesn't feel right because that'll never happen for me. It doesn't feel right that I, I'm not that lucky. It doesn't feel right that's for somebody else. It will never be my reality. And, and, and so then you talk yourself out of it. You lose the vision and the idea and you go back to re relating to past limited beliefs. And that's, that's how you have to understand it. I'm literally operating off of what I think. Your thoughts are literally the genesis of your destiny. Your thoughts are the seeds of your destiny, how you're thinking. But when you allow it, your body will dictate what you think. Your body is anchored in emotion. And if it gets addicted to an emotion, no matter how bad the emotion is that it's addicted to, it will fight to stay in that state of existence. So you got a person that's being beat on by their spouse, by their mate. And you can't understand for the life of you why they keep going back. It's not just something mental. It's a part of a mental, but a big part of it is that your body doesn't know how to relate to the new idea of getting away from it and what that means. So your body says, while this is not good for me, I know it. I want to be in a place where I know it. So your body is actually at peace being in turmoil. So your body will literally sit up and demand that you be in a state of confusion, that you be in a state of fear, that you be in a state of anxiety, anger, bitterness, all of those emotions that anchor you to your past and never allow you to look at the possibilities of your future. You are being programmed. One of the things you've got to be very careful of when you're trying to reprogram and create a new paradigm or create a paradigm shift is the media. 
because the media isn't designed to bring you peace. It's not designed to make you whole. The media is designed to create problems that certain companies have the solution to. You got a big problem in the way of health. You got a bunch of commercials that's suggesting that your, 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 your pancreas isn't functioning right. That's suggesting that your liver isn't functioning right. That's suggesting that your thyroid isn't functioning right. That's suggesting that your immune system is diminishing. That's suggesting that your testosterone production uh, pr productivity for men is, 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 is lacking and that there has to be these things that only I have the solution to and that you're taking it in. It's, 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 it's suggesting that you can't make it without someone over here helping you. It's suggesting all of these different things and we're walking right into it because we have our gates wide open. We don't guard our gates against things that are speaking ill of us, that are putting thoughts into our minds, that suggest that we aren't healthy that suggests that we don't have the capacity to rise, that's, that don't suggest that we are able, able in our existence and our direct connection to the supreme being of the universe, call him God, call him the almighty, but whatever you do is understand that there's something inside of you planted there by the one who designed you that allows you to rise above any situation. You are never trapped in anything until you accept that you're trapped based on what you allow to come into your gates. Do you get what I'm saying? You're being programmed every day. Either you're controlling the programming or someone else is. You got your radio on. You're being programmed. I'm going to tell you where the radio is real dangerous. Again, in Theta, whether you're listening to it when you fall asleep or another way that Theta can be reached at a, at a, a milder level than when you fall asleep is when you've got your earphones on and you're working. And I do it a lot in the gym. Well, I'm working out, but I've got my earphones on. The music is playing in the background, but I might not really truly be listening to every word of it. I might be more focused on what's the next step, how many more reps, what I can get out of it. Or I might be here, I might be going off into uh what which I do a lot, living in my future. I'm living in my destiny. I'm creating this emotional state that allows me to be in a place. So I've literally done the opposite. I've created an emotional state by constantly living in where I'm going. And I've had some great moments. So I've been able to live in the present. But I'm, even when I'm having an awesome moment in the present, I'm already creating a greater moment, a better moment in the future. And the brain perceives it. And I have this emotional state. So when I do encounter something in the now that's not uncomfortable, it can't shake me because the common place of my existing uh, existed being is a positive emotion. So when I start to feel negative about something, angry, upset, frustrated, whatever it is, I don't I don't hardly deal with the worry thing too much, but 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 any of those things, my body immediately sends a message to my brain, we don't belong here. And I sit up and I stop and I process it. And I tell people all the time, while I'm not perfect at it, my goal is to give myself a 90 second window to experience anything. And then after that, if it's not good, I've got to let it go. And so my thing is, I can have something where somebody does something that really upsets me. And my wife sees it all the time when I'm driving. I, I, you know, I've got internal road rage. I'm going to say what I have to say. I'm not going to pull up to nobody, go off on it for the most part. I got real upset one, one, one time last, last this past week. But for the most part, I'm going to say what I got to say on my own. She laughs, but she, she, she teases me. But 90 seconds. I ain't even on it no more. I, I, I'm not even thinking about it. Uh, people can call me with, with news that I don't want to hear about something in business. It's always something going on. When you're striving to build something and grow something, there are going to be challenges every day. But when I hear about the challenges, I take it in. I, I process it. I give myself 90 seconds to experience it. Then I put it aside and I re find something in my world that will reestablish this positive state of existence that I exist in. Um, and so you've got to understand how you, pro this is the thing. Most people have very strong emotions attached to negativity. So when something's going, when you've got a problem, a situation, a condition, or a person that you have issues with, you give a lot of uh, uh, energy to it. You give a lot of attention to it. And what you don't understand is the very thing you need to rise above it is in the energy you're giving to it. 
So what you've got to learn and understand is when that's something you don't want, you don't give it attention, you don't give it energy, you acknowledge that exists and then you work towards the solution. If it's a person in your life that's causing you harm, you know that they're there, acknowledge it, but you don't keep focusing on what they're doing and why they're doing it and all of that. You focus on what you're going to do to create distance. You focus on what you're going to do to rise above it. When you have a problem financially, you acknowledge that the problem is there, but you don't sit there all day long and focus on, man, if I don't do this, if I don't, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. If you keep saying this is going to happen, guess what? It will. What you have to sit up and say is, I am built for this. Some way, somehow, I'm going to overcome it. Some way, somehow, I'm going to rise above it. Some way, somehow, I will have a solution to any dilemma, any enigma that I encounter. There's absolutely nothing in this world that can shut me down because my destiny is written and my destiny means that I am destined to complete it if I stay focused and continue on. And I trust in my design to perform the things for which I have been created to perform. There's nothing mediocre about me. There's nothing average about me. There's something on the inside of me that demands excellence. There's something on the inside of me that demands performance. There's something on the inside of me that raises me to a level that I perform beyond what most people perform because I am tapped into my designer. I am connected to my my, my 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 purpose I have a passion that is pushing me and I am in control of my program what and, and, and that's it we're being programmed everything we read everything we hear everything we see even sense of smell and taste will trigger emotions based off of how we perceive it and what we give our attention to you've had it you've had a smell that came out of nowhere that triggered memories nostalgia we call it but what it is it's that 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 connectivity to the emotion and what we have to stop doing is anchoring ourselves in past negative experiences we've got to stop letting our body function as our mind so when we get to something where we're doing something new and it's something for our betterment but because it doesn't feel right or actually doesn't feel familiar we're not used to that emotional state because we've been in this state of anger, bitterness, frustration, hatred, all of these negative emotions that anchor us in the past and anchor us to nothing but more negativity. You got to understand energy resonates with energy. So when I'm creating negative energy, I can never attract a positive reality. So as long as I've got anger, bitter, hatred, and all this other stuff, I can only attract other uh, other uh, levels of energy that are functioning on that frequency. Energy resonates. It's been proven scientifically at all levels that you are attracting to you the state that you're currently in. That's why you find complainers hanging around complainers. That's why you find naysayers hanging around naysayers. That's why you find dreamers hanging around dreamers. That's why you find people who are high performers hanging around high performers. It's not classism. What it is, is energyism. If you want to make that a word, it's I can only resonate with someone who's on the frequency I'm on. And when you break that down to the most simple common denominator, if I want something, all I have to do is find the frequency it exists on and achieve the frequency and I will draw it to me. I drew my wife in high specificity to myself. She did the same thing. When you've got two people focused and centered on a frequency to create a reality and it lines up like that, you're literally pulling yourself towards each other. That's how business partners come together. That's how couples come together. You, that, I mean, you can find friendships that were about frequency when you understand that everything on this planet, planet even the glass that's sitting there, has no mobility whatsoever on its own has an energy frequency. If you've ever watched, if you grew up when I grew up, I'm 51. If you grew up when I grew up, you grew up uh, in a time where you, you saw all kinds of cartoons. And one of the things that you see on cartoons all the time was the fat lady who used to hit this high note and the glass would break. And as a kid, I'm going like, that does not happen. 
you know, I'm, I've always been this analytical person. I've got to break it down. I've got to be able to look at it. I've got to be able to say, you can't just tell me. It just is. It just is. It's not an explanation to me. It's never been that way. And I drove my parents crazy. But I need to know why. Because I said so is not an answer. And so I've always needed to know. So I'm like, that cannot happen. Then I got up and I started to study physics. I got older and I started to study physics and I went back and I revisit visited resonation. Resonation is when energy attracts like energy. And what happens is if you take that glass in that room and you tap it with a metal rod or a tuning rod, it's going to make, it's got a pitch, it's got a frequency, it's got a sound. And if you tap it, you're going to get the same sound every time. If you tap it in a certain place, you're going to get the same sound. And it may have, depending on the thickness of the glass and the variances in the thickness, it's going to have different frequencies at different points. But here's the thing. All this person has to do with a person who really understands pitch and voice and everything, you tap that glass and they have the range, they'll get that frequency. What happens is when they hit that frequency, their, 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 their vocal cords releases energy that literally violent, vibrates through the air and it will literally be drawn to the frequency that's silent in the glass. Here's the problem though. Wherever, whatever, see that there's multiple frequencies depending on the thickness. All it has to do is have one entry level. To be attracted. Once the vibration enters the glass, the glass isn't strong enough to handle the vibration. The glass shatters. Shatters. And that happens with everything. You're attracting what you're living by your thinking, which emits thoughts. I mean, which emits energy. Your thoughts have energy. Your thoughts have physicality. Your thoughts are literally moving the universe either for you or against you. But it goes back to your programming. Your programming is what controls your thoughts. What are you taking into your gates that supports what you say you want to do? How much are you reading about growing in the areas you want to grow in? How much are you reading about expanding who you are as a person and performing? How much you how many times are you hearing by the music you listen to that you aren't worth anything? How much how many uh, songs you listen to where a woman is referred to in a negative light or a man is referred to in a negative light? How many television shows where someone that you can relate to is being portrayed in a negative light uh, and seen in a negative light? How many uh, things are you looking at where they're suggesting that you don't have good health? They don't know you. They've never examined you, but they're suggesting. How many times you go into the doctor's office without really truly understanding who you are as a source of energy, as a biological being, and they tell you something's wrong, and the next thing you know, it starts to get worse? Why is it getting worse? Because they planted a seed that created a reality, and now you're thinking it. We know by the study of the placebo effect that once you, once you start to believe you're healthy, you become healthier. You open up and activate or upregulate genes that serve health. When you start to believe that you're not healthy, when you start to believe that your health is declining, when you start to believe that you're getting sicker, you upregulate genes that have disease. So the more you stress, you upregulate genes that make you unhealthy. The more that you have peace, you up I mean you you genes that make you ill. When you upregul when you when you when you uh upregulate genes based on peace because you're thinking with a positive mindset, you literally downregulate diseased uh genes that express disease and you upregulate genes that produce or support health. And that's real. It's called psychosomatics, but it, 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 you can look at it uh, in another form and study. If you want to look up and research it, epigenetics, all of these things have a play in who you are and what you become and how you live life at a certain level. You need to eat right, of course, because that sustains a certain biological component of health. But the vast majority of your health is created right here. Not just mentally, but physically. The more you stress about your health, the worse your health gets. The more you allow yourself to be in a state of worry, stress, anxiety, fear, anger, your health declines. You can literally add 5 to 25 years of life to your life by changing the way you think. It's so much more than how much money you can get. Life is so much more than that. Yeah, you need to have a certain amount of resources to do the things you want to do and, and do it without having any concern about issues. Yes, you do. But when you can sit up and literally think in a way that enhances your life, gives your life not only length of years, but quality of life, then you're in a place where you can play the game of life at its highest level and you can leave an impact and a legacy that speaks volumes. But it starts with you understanding that you can't let everything inside of your gate. Either turn on something you know is positive on the TV when you're falling asleep or turn it off. 
put on the earphones and have affirmations playing while you go to sleep. I actually do that for my clients. I actually started it about a couple of weeks ago where I'm doing it now as a standalone service so people can actually contact me and buy affirmations that they can put in their, uh, put on their phone, plug it in their ears and play it while they fall asleep. And of course, once you, once you fall asleep and you're actually into a deep sleep and you wake up and the earphones in there, they either, they've either come out or you can take them off and throw them to the side. The job is done for the night, but it works. It works. And, 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 and the thing is, you've got to be control of what's going in your gates. Uh, if, if, if you are a person that studies the Bible or you live, you, you live your life according to the Bible, the second most common demand in the Bible is to guard your hearts and minds. Your, your, your hearts and minds, as you understand it in the Bible, uh, is the Greek uh, nous and cardia, mind and heart. And they both are directed at this, your thinking. The noose is your conscious mind. Your cardia is your subconscious mind. Your cardia is what controls 96% of your behavior. And that's why if you read in the book of Matthew, it says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's why you'll catch yourself when you're not thinking, saying things. And that when you're saying things and you're not conscious about what you're saying, you're just coming up and saying them. It's coming from the abundance of the heart. It's coming from the depths of the subconscious. It's coming from what you believe the most about yourself and about the world. And so it's, it, 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 it's about knowing and then controlling what you do. You're in direct control of your destiny. You can't control what other people do, but you can control how prepared you are to deal with it. You can control with how you respond to it. You can control with how you overcome it. You are in control of your movement. You're in control of your thinking. You're in control of your destiny. Hmm. Look, once again, I'm excited about what's coming up in the year to come. I'm excited about what's coming up tomorrow. And so... Prepare yourself. Be in a state of overwhelming anticipation and expectation based off of the ideas you start to adopt and what's possible for you. Stop living in the past. Stop looking behind you. Stop being anchored by your emotions into negative situations you once lived in. Start releasing that stuff. It doesn't mean you got to let people back in that they don't know how to treat you. That's not what it means. It means that you got to release it because the energy that you are uh, carrying because of it is working against you. It's impacting your, 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 your physical health, your mental health, your expectations, how you view life. It is literally squeezing the life out of you. Let it go. Start to find ways to create positive emotions. Start with start your day with gratitude. Start your day with, with having something that you're thankful for. I start every day with three things that I'm thankful for. Before I do anything else, what am I thankful for? I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my kids. I'm thankful that I have an opportunity to change people's lives. And then I also have other things that I'm thankful. I, I keep going, but I got to have at least three, three things that I mention when I wake up that I'm thankful for. And then I go into the fact that I'm still alive. And if I'm still alive, there's something out there that I'm meant to do. See, my life has purpose. I've convinced myself that of that a long time ago. So if I'm still breathing, I'm here for a reason. If I'm still breathing, there's something for me to do. If I'm here and I'm still breathing, life isn't over. Over. I still got a chance to go after some of the things that I've, gone, I've been going after that I have not yet achieved or obtained. It's not over until I stop breathing. And so I want to encourage you to stand up and make today the day that you're going to sit up and say, I'm going to release those negative anchors. I'm no longer going to be anchored in the negative, negative emotions of the past. I'm not going to last, allow past traumatic experiences to hold me hostage. I am going to acknowledge that I've been through it, but I'm not going to sit here and allow it to hold me hostage. I'm going to graduate into something greater. I'm going to move forward and become something more phenomenal. I'm going to make my presence felt. I'm going to leave my imprint in this world. People will know I was here long after I'm gone because I will be a world changer. I will be a life changer. I will be someone that shakes up the world because I was built to do extraordinary things. You've got to start talking to yourself. You've got to start creating a new emotional reality. You've got to start doing something that tells the world that you are here to do something phenomenal. Stop living in the past. And my wife even reminded me that sometimes even things that you view in the past that was good, that you look at and say, man, that was good. And you're still holding on to it, may be locking you out of something greater because you won't release it. It, 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 it. The thing is, one thing I've learned, and she was absolutely right. One thing I learned is anytime you got to give up something, there's always something greater that, 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 that you can replace it with. Even if you've got to fall down and hit rock bottom, when you get back, that's going to be something greater than the things you lost on the way down.
And you've got to be aware of that. You've got to look up and say, you know what? I'm not stuck here. This is not the end result. I've got something greater coming to me. You're creating your reality. Look, that's it. Uh, I'm glad I was able to get back and get this done. I hate when I get uh, a live session going and it's killed or it's 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 some technical difficulties because I got to go back and recreate it. And uh, I'm glad that I was able to get that done. I uh, wasn't going to quit on it. I don't do that. But remember, uh, we're right now in the midst of our Cyber Monday promotion. Critical Mass, this is my 20th book. So if you just understand what it took to write the first one and get it published, to understand that this here, this alone says there's something in being relentless. There's something in perseverance. There's something in believing in yourself. There's something in rising and demanding a new level of excellence and a new standard of, standard of performance in your life. Book number 20. They said book number one wouldn't get published. And here we are. When you get this book, you will also get a free disc assessment. We're going to assess your strengths and how you can use those strengths to move you forward starting immediately. And that's a $350 value. Also, all of my programs and courses are now 25% off. And here's the kicker. The Platinum Package, my flagship program, a year, 52 sessions of me just working with me and really working on and developing you in all of the areas you want to work on and become better at. One year is 50% off and I've added 26 additional sessions. That's a year and a half of working with me at 50% off. Again, that information isn't in this description, but I am going to immediately take it and post it here. But if you want it now, just go back to the previously failed attempt at live, which is still posted and will remain posted. Um, uh, until I get all of the information transferred. So go back, get it, click it, find me. Inbox me if you're impatient and I get you squared away. But I'm telling you, 50% off for a year and a half of go get it. That's less than $100 a week. That's like something like close to $70 a week to change your life. Look, I'm going to get off of here. Uh, as I always say, I'm going to live my life on full. Every day matters to me. Every second matters to me. I'm living my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. I can't tell you what that means. I can't tell you what it means to be on path to die on E. See, I'm not going to take a book with me. I'm going to write every one I've got in me until I breathe my last. I'm not going to take a lecture with me. I'm going to speak every chance I get. I'm not going to take a one-on-one -on -one session. Every chance I get to engage, I'm going to engage. I'm not going to take a, 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 a work and improvement that I could have achieved on my marriage to the grave with me. Everything I've got to give my wife, I'm going to give it to her with every ounce of my being until we have everything we can possibly have at the time I leave this place. I'm not going to stop trying to father my kids no matter how old they get. I am going to die on E. And when you die on E, you die with no regrets. You die knowing you gave life everything you have, the good and the bad. Yes, I've made some mistakes. Yes, I've fallen short. Yes, I wish there were some things that I could change, but I will not die with regrets because I didn't stay in the sunken place. I didn't stay in poor uh Poor thinking. I didn't get caught up and stuck in my mistakes. That's what is going to be written about me in the legacy that I leave. Down E. I look to hear from some of you guys. Uh, I'm going to get off of here. It's awesome. You guys have an unbelievable and fantastic day. Enjoy the rest of it, but let's make this end of 2018 exceptional. Let's make it extraordinary. Let's make it phenomenal. Let's move to some place higher. Don't wait until January 1st. Start now. Move into the new year with momentum. Move into the new, new year rolling over obstacles, jumping over obstacles, leaping over obstacles. Mm -hmm. Let's make it happen. I'm out of here. Peace.